Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus yes. still speaks. Yes. The broken body of Jesus still heals. Yes. And the finished work of Jesus has already destroyed the works of the devil. Amen. Therefore, we come with a fire in our mouth. We come with fire in our mouth. And we join the unified, harmonious, exponential shout.
snap, we rub on each other. Oh dear. Huh? So we're very lovey-dovey. And it's good. That's very good. But you remember back in the day when um, the blood, they had to kill the cow or the, the lamb and put the blood on the doorpost. Are we doing that now? No. But the idea was still there. Amen. It was, it signified that Jesus will come and die and his blood will protect us. Amen. Amen. So sometimes as time come and go, a little change may happen. So we won't be touching every one of you and doing this and then dipping in the oil and doing this to the next person. Because in the church we're going to begin proper protocol. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we have come up with some interesting ways to anoint you. So if you see me dip a Q-tip oh dear. and do it on your head and throw a Q-tip in, in, in something, don't feel uncomfortable. Don't say I'm not anointed because my, the hand was not touching me. It's a symbol. <laughs> Amen? So there are some changes. I bet you the people who've been taking the one cup don't want it anymore. I didn't want the one cup a long time ago. I ran from the one cup in a past life faith church. When we were kids. But changes are happening in the world and we want you to to have a heads up as a people of God. We already know it will come. We should be the ones as salt and light. Amen. Get all the information we can. Share it with others. Let them know that God protects. Let Amen. them know the blood prevails. Amen. Let them know they don't have to live in fear, but they still have to take precautions. Amen. 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 And so because our profession is in nursing over 33 years, so that makes it over 60 something years that we are collectively been in the nursing profession, I've worked in immunization, and for those of you who like to say that they are doing us something so you won't take precaution, that doesn't make sense. Hmm. We did a, um, a presentation in London last year as well as South Carolina with, with Pastor Katina. And we, we spoke about a, a pastor in, in Angola who went to many churches ministering, but he was one of the first to die. Okay? So, um, altar ministry may be a little different. You may not be laboring over people anymore. <laughs> the scripture says, he sent the word and he did it. You may just have to send the word from up here to over there. Rise up in faith and believe God. You guys are laughing, but this is for real. This is so for real. I am um, at home. My husband had a cold, and I put my head on the other side of the bed. Okay? I mean, I got a cold a little later, but it took a little while. So all of us were not sick at the same time. <laughs> so we can help each other. I'm saying when we do these things at home, we think we're scarring each other. But if we can practice at home, when we come to church, it'll be a little easier. When we go out in the public, it's easier, and we help protect each other. Yeah. And we love from when we were small, our parents said, come to church, whether you're sick or not, because we won't get healed. But in this day and age, we're telling you, the word going to reach you home. If you're sick and you're coughing and you're blowing your nose constantly, I had to be out of work for days because I was sick. I wanted to go to work, sure, but I couldn't go. I couldn't sing. I couldn't go to rehearsals where I wanted to be, but it was not wise Amen. to be there. So it was just the anointing that helped me sing tonight. It was not the voice. Amen. It was the anointing. And so we want to, we wanted to take a little break in the midst of a worship environment, because there's wisdom in worship and in the environment, to just share a little bit with you um, as to the recommendation. And today, uh, Eunice was in our conference, and so I'll let her share a few things and a few tips with you. Amen. Judy yeah. asked me to, um, come up here to support her, but I think she was doing an excellent <laughs> job. <laughs> I was getting ready to go sit down. <laughs> but 
but um, uh, the, the, you know, the news is saturated with so much information concerning the coronavirus. Um, the coronavirus is not a new virus in the earth, but COVID-19 is a new strain of the virus. And um, it's affecting uh, people whose immune system is not so strong, and the elderly. In the United States, there are over a thousand positive cases as of today, and I think 56 deaths already. Uh, as Judy talk about wisdom, uh, the symptoms of this coronavirus is mainly cough, fever, shortness of breath. And so what is happening in the nation is that a lot of areas are, um, people are being self-quarantined, uh, social distancing is happening, schools are closing, um, businesses are um, working from home, and so, as Judy said, we have to use wisdom in everything that we do and not ignore the fact that this is happening. We thank God for the blood of Jesus. We thank God for Psalms 91. We thank God for Psalms 21. I will lift up my eyes. We thank God for hand sanitizer. We thank God for masks. We thank God for all of his provision, okay? So um, we want you to be very vigilant. Um, it is said that if you are within six feet of a person who is coughing or sneezing and they are positive for the COVID-19, it's very possible that you can um, be infected or become infected with this virus. So if you must travel, even though a lot of travel is um, being um, curtailed or, or stopped and, and some nations are, um, are not having travel come in or go out. I think if Italy is, is totally quarantined um, and, and shut down now. So, um, but if you must travel and you, your immune system is not as strong as it should be, um, it is recommended that you get the N95 mask, have your hand sanitizer, and protect yourself during travel because in the airplane there's circulating air, there's no wind blowing, whoever sneezes, everything is just mixing up together and then, you know, um, I have my little way of protecting myself when people sneeze and cough, but <laughs> um, get it. Supplies are, supplies are difficult. Um, medical vendors are rationing. I work at the health center. We ordered three cases of masks. They sent three little boxes. So that's how serious it is. So, um, you know, but we have to be very innovative. We have to be very creative. If you have to use a whole time handkerchief, whatever you do, um, you use the next best thing if you don't have what is recommended. So, um, the Virgin Islands is right now, um, so, some social gatherings have been canceled this week. Um, for instance, you know, the Montessori school or the Anthony school usually have the taste, taste of the nation that was canceled, I understood. Um, schools, the Department of Education sent out information concerning children and what parents need to do and so forth. So, um, as a body of Christ, we are going to stay focused in prayer and follow the guidelines of the, the territory. Amen? God bless you. Put your hands together for you, yes. So, we do have some handouts and that's, this was taken directly from the CBC website. So if you need to share with anyone, you can direct them to the CBC. It has uh, some facts on there, what you should do, wash hands often, avoid touching your face and nose. That is very hard. I'm constantly talking to myself. Hey, do you take your hand off your face? Okay, so it's a constant relearning 
okay? And um, don't allow your children to go to the bathroom by themselves. Okay? The little ones don't know to, how to be careful. Take them to the bathroom and, um, you know, cover them. Hand washing. Hand washing. With soap and water. Okay? Everybody's good? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we can move on because God has some awesome things. Uh, but we as uh, healthcare providers could not come here tonight or at any of our um, meetings and say nothing and act like nothing is happening around the world. It's happening. They are coming by boat, land, and um, boat and air, by the airplanes. They are coming in. And so we are to be careful. And we had some people who came in today and yesterday. Hallelujah. Listen, I spoke to John and I said he's coming from Uganda. And I told him, hey boy, put on some masks, do this, do that, do that, do that. And I tried to discourage him. And some, I spoke to Sip and I said, are you, are you sure you're comfortable about coming? I was trying to discourage them. If they're not comfortable, it's okay. We're going to be all right. But God has a plan for this meeting. And his plan to do it. And so at this point, I want to just uh, have our visitors to stand. Pastor Cyprian and Bethel, put your hands together for her. Pastor Mark prayed Asaph through, Amen. then prayed 
Sure, 
Surely I was coming to St. Thomas. Amen. <laughs> Let me thank God for the opportunity to be here before you. I met this fine woman of God just a, not even a year ago. We were in London, but I met her baby boy here in South Africa almost two years ago. So I'm so excited to be here. Um, I, I just give God praise. Um, prophecies have been sent over our lives forever from kids. So when it's time to now do the work of the Lord, we're going to let words keep us in the box. We're going to let words keep us from doing the will and the work. I was like, no way. I'm coming. She tried her best to discourage me. I said, I'm so busy packing. I got to figure out what not to pack. <laughs> so I just thank God for the opportunity to be here. And God bless you all. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you kidding? I'm coming. <laughs> so um, God has got one more person. I know we have lots more, but one more person tonight, and that is Pastor Louise Acevedo. Revelation 
chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. I was reading this morning uh, a devotion, and I think this is so fitting. 24 thrones with 24 elders seated upon them. Surrounding the throne, the elders were dressed in white clothing and had good gold crowns on their head. From the throne came lightning, voices, and thunder. In front of the throne were seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And I drop to this verse, verse, the latter part of verse 8, they were declaring, Holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And we scroll down to verse 11, You are worthy, O Lord, and God, to receive glory and honor and power because you created all things. It is by your will that they existed and were created. I say that to say that the, the theme here is shout for the conference, for the Lord has given you the, the, the city. It seemed to me that in heaven, the Bible declares it is in heaven, so let be the earth. And as worship came today, as we came in the house of God, this thought came to be that when worship came in the heavens, there was a shift. <coughs> the thundering began, lightning from the throne. As worship ascended, it changed the atmosphere of heaven. And all day I was thinking about this, that for these few days we come together, all kinds of negative things that we hear and all kinds of things happening in this earth. But the worship that comes from this house for these few nights, I pray there will be a shift. Not only a shift in the minds of the people, but we'll see God show up and what is exactly going on in heaven will be existing in the earth. Everyone says, one more time, shake. And as we sang tonight, and as I lift my hands in worship to the Lord, I sense the shifting has already begun. Amen. So you didn't just come here to see each other and our wonderful guests, which we love and appreciate. We come for a shift. Everyone says shift. When we shout. We expect a shift because heaven is shifting and the earth must feel the shift. <laughs> Put your hands together, my Lord. You must feel a shift. And only when worship began, the atmosphere of heaven changed. And our worship has begun in this house. There's a shift. Oh, Ireland. Yeah. I believe St. Thomas is the best place to be. Yeah. Because of this conference, yeah. no sickness, there is what? A shit. Want to bring all our pastors with us here this evening and fight for ministry gifts? If you're here tonight, could you please stand and be recognized? Our local fight for ministry gifts, right in front. I must I probably know everyone here. Right in front here is my wonderful wife, Pastor Sonia Hazel. You know way, you know putting the way. To our right is my brother, Dr. Apostle Oral Hazel. All the way, my good friend and, and, and colleague, uh, Reverend Dennis Estridge. We have Apostle Edge here with us tonight with the together. Way in the back is no other than I don't know the name for that, but Reverend Thomas Elon. 
And here we have with us tonight, put your hands together for the Connors. Pastor and Pastor Connor. Put your hands together. You may be seated. Be happy to have you tonight. We thank God that you've come for the shift. When we shout, there's going to be a what? The shift. And we thank you all for the much more activities in this week. And I'm looking forward to a shift. Where things begin to happen and change comes to our nation and our island. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a shift. There is a move. And we are part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to invite uh, Minister Karen. She's going to give her announcements. But there's so many things and ministries we have this weekend. We want you to be a part of it. Um, tonight we're spending some time to just get some groundwork done. Uh, tomorrow evening we're going to just fly. Amen. Amen. But the woman of God is just holding herself down. Uh, <laughs> Nicole Ballasting Holder, she's just holding herself back because she came with a word tonight. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. So she'll be on soon. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome and awesome. I don't know if that's a word. It's a word now. Awesome and awesome. Our announcements for tonight are, we have t-shirts available at $10, $12 for sizes small to large. Above that, they're $15. They are azalea and sapphire. Other words, pink and blue. <laughs> so we'll have them for you tonight. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna be at Global Life Apostle. Oral Hazel's Church. That's on Raccoon Highway. It's starting at 10 o'clock sharp. It's entitled Special Ministry and Anointing Service. This will have all of our guests, and I urge everyone to come out, take your lunch a little early, and come out and be blessed. This year is our 15th year, and I sense the move for months. I've been sensing a move. As Apostle Hazel said, a shift. So let's come out. We need volunteers for our float. Um, we want to make it big and beautiful. But we can't say, Sister Eunice, do this by yourself. So we're asking all hands on deck, 7 o'clock, Saturday morning. Yes, it's a little early, but get up. Put in your two hours, and let's make the float a beautiful one this year. Amen. Thank you. Um, we're asking you to be at the Crown Bay location. If you know Crown Bay Plaza, it's right across the street. You're going to see it. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. Um, the parade is on Saturday. begins at 3 o'clock p.m. We ask that you meet at the Vitalco building. That's across from the graveyard. We ask that you come at 2.30 so that you can be ready and able and ready to, you know the world, the world does a thing. Why can't we do another thing? You know, and just make it an awesome, this is our 15th year. I, I'm shaking. I don't know about you, but I'm, our 15th year, always sanctified. Always praising him. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Oh, sorry. That's my bad. Women of Joy and Power International Summit will be held Sunday, 5 o'clock p.m. at our very own Bishop Dallasy Lloyd's Church, Living Word Ministries in Smith Bay. Come out. It's going to be dynamic. Amen. We ask the women to come out. I'm not gonna say the men. We always say, oh men, you can come. No. Women, come. <laughs> come. Thank you. Amen. And you know the men been asking me if it's only for women, Karen. And I tell them no, they can't come to me. <laughs> so they may be able to go 
had something to encourage someone. Amen? <laughs> okay, uh, right now we're going to give unto the Lord. How many of you are ready to give unto the Lord? Put your hands together for Jesus as my little sister, Joan Moraine, comes. Pastor Joan Moraine. She's going to share. And you know, for the first time, I'm seeing my brother Solomon. Put your hands together for Solomon. Please stand, Solomon. He came in today. Love you, love you, love you. Always come to support. Amen. Bless you, bless you. A lot of people don't want to do the offering, okay? So I have to call my sister. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. God is good, baby. Yeah. It's good to see all of you this evening. We thank God for Judy's life and what he's using her to do in these islands, to raise the bar and the level of worship yeah. to the King of Kings. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I believe that... As the theme goes, shout, the Lord has given you the city. Each of us have a city we must conquer. Each of us has a city that God is saying to us, I've given you. So the theme is not just for the conference. It's a word that God is saying to you individually. You shout. You shout. There's a city that I'm releasing to you even now. Amen. And as God releases that, we want to sow into it because we're expectant. We're saying, God, I'm going to connect with you on what you're doing. I'm going to sow into this so that I can claim my city. Amen. 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 There's nothing that God does without making an investment. And there are times when God speaks a word. And each time I look at it, shout, for God has given you the city. What is your city? What city has he given you? Is it St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. John, uh, Bahamas? You know, wherever you are, what city is it? Is it your marriage? Is it your children, salvation? What is it that God is releasing to you right now? I want you to take a minute to think about it and then take a seat. I say, God, I'm connecting with you, and I'm going to shout my way through this sea so that my city will be released. Amen? Amen. Amen? So those of you who need an envelope, ushers, please raise your hand if you need an envelope, and they will get it to you. And I believe, God, that Judges, Joshua chapter 6 verse 16, will be a reality in your life. That we will conquer our cities. Amen. We will get it. And the shout is not just today and not tomorrow. <laughs> Sometimes we think we do it once. You remember the, the uh, I believe it was Elisha who told the, um, the man to go and, and strike the arrow. Yeah. And he did it. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. And Elisha got angry. Yeah. Yeah. Because... There are times when desperate times call for desperate measures. And you can't just say shout <laughs> without it being radical. Shout is not hi. Shout is not passive. Shout is being aggressive. Amen. And as you aggressively shout, when you go home, you tell the Lord, God, I've sown this seed into my shout. And you let out a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! You let out that shout. And you have in your mind the thing that you're sowing into. And you keep shouting until that thing becomes a reality. Amen. 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 So we're not going to just shout one day. It's not just a weekend shout. <laughs> it's a shout continual until manifestation comes. Amen. Amen. So as we collect the offering, can you stand to your feet? And Father, we just thank you. If you can raise it, Father, I thank you for the seed that we are planting into our shell, into that city that we're believing you to claim. We thank you, God, that you have already gone up before us. The battle was not fought by Israel. They just obeyed an instruction. 
And Father, we thank you that the instruction tonight is to shout. So we're going to shout until we see manifestation in the earth, in that area that we need to conquer. We thank you, Lord God, that the seed that leaves our hands will go into that thing and will multiply and create a crescendo in the spirit realm so that the hell will hear and know to give up. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Worship team, can you do something very short while we collect the offering? Amen. They're excited about giving into the kingdom. Amen.
As your will 